strength. I always had this fascination with strength. Ever since I remember, ever since I was little, I would do like push-ups. My dad had little barbell sets. I would try to bench and sometimes it wouldn't work. <laughs> I would end up crushing myself and you know, crashing the weights on the, the garage ground. And you know, in life, you're gonna have hurdles. It's just how you, how you stand back up and how you persevere. No matter what comes in front of you, find a way to get through it and just keep going. I knew Malcolm, or of his name, uh, when I was in high school. At Aloha Stadium, they'll say the name, and I, I recognize the name, Malcolm Lutu. I was part of the All-State team in football, and I was also the state champion in powerlifting for three years in high school. Went away to play football, came back, and entered my first men's meet, and ended up winning it. And I went five years in a row and won the state championship for Hawaii. He was actually a very good hula dancer. Competed in the police Olympics also. He got into bodybuilding, and then he got into strongman events. He's been successful in, in anything he's tried in his life. So in 2003, um, during my yearly physical for the police department, they found out that my kidneys were, weren't working as, you know, how they're supposed to work. And for the next five years, I was doing tests, taking medication. The way I was thinking that, oh, nothing's wrong with me. In 2008, I get called in, and he told me, there's damage to my kidneys, and you gotta go on dialysis. Malcolm is my rock, and to hear stage four kidney failure, it, it was devastating. Even though it was inconvenient, four times a day, you know, it was a challenge to me. I make it work. However, whatever I have to do, I'll make it work. If it keeps me around the kids and the family longer, you know, I'm gonna do what it, it takes to do. Well, the biggest thing about peritoneal dialysis is infection, and it's probably the worst pain you ever felt. Within approximately two months, I had two major infections which caused two major surgeries. I was at my lowest point. That was the first time in my life I felt weak. That was the, the scariest moment because here's this person, this athlete, and he's just laid out on the, on the couch and didn't want to eat, didn't want to, you know, watch TV. He would just have this look in his eye and it, it was sad. And The only thing that would make me better was a, basically a, a kidney transplant. A friend who knows Mal as well as I. One day he came up to me, he says, you heard about Malcolm, yeah? I said, what, what, what about Mal? And he said, he's sick, um, he has kidney disease. And Tanari said that a few folks got tested, but nobody matched. And I said, what do they need to match? And he said, his blood type. And I said, what's his blood type? And he said, oh, positive. And I said, I have his kidney. I think the hardest thing through this, other than fighting, Getting, getting better was to accept Pono's kidney. They say that we're the lowest organ donor state, yet we're the most giving people. And I asked when I found that out, why is that? And they said, because of our heritage, our Asian and Polynesian heritage, we won't ask and we won't accept. But that's only half of our culture. If you come to my house and I ask you if you'd like to eat something, you're probably gonna tell me no, because that's our culture. But the other half of the culture says, I'm gonna make you something to eat and you're gonna eat anyway. Because that's who we are. You know, we can't live half the culture. And so, even though he couldn't ask, I had to go feed him anyway. Never really had anything done for me. I've always done it myself. For somebody to do that for you, that was, that was like the, one of the biggest um, things I had to accept. On December 2nd, we had our surgery. After this surgery, instantly, upon opening my eyes, I was like a different person. My appetite came back, energy came back. I was walking the next day. It's just amazing that transformation from being strong and then you're weak and then you're back to strong again. This is, that's amazing. You know, I had so much energy that we ended up, me and my son, even though I'm all masked up, 
we're outside cutting down trees and you know doing all kinds of stuff. You know, I'm back at work full duty, pretty much doing what I used to do before. You know, Pono is our part of our family now. You know, he's just given us not only Malcolm's kidney, but he's given us a whole new look on life. You know, for me, it wasn't the act of giving connected us. For me, Malcolm and I were already connected. I think what giving does is it just kind of unveils this connection that already exists. Ponod said I did something in high school that made him remember me a certain way, and that's why he stepped up to the plate for me. I was a brand new freshman at Kamehameha, and I'm sitting on a bench on a, at one of our campuses at Kamehameha. And I'm looking across the field and I see my cousin who played football with Malcolm. He had this injured ankle and he couldn't walk. He's just hobbling, but he couldn't walk. And as I'm watching, this guy gets up behind him and he picks him up and he starts to carry him. I said, wow. And I told Malcolm about that story. And I said, Mal, over 35 years ago, you carried my cousin. And he told me, I don't remember. I said, I never forgot. For the rest of your life, I'm going to carry you now. 